Welcome everyone to Keep It Classy Tech. This video is going to be an unboxing and initial impressions of the TCL S546, which is the 2021 Google TV model of the 5 series. Uh, this one is $600 right now for the 55 inch and $800 for the 65 inch. I was very surprised at how much packing was in the box to protect the screen. I'm not quite sure what this like felt cloth thing is on the bottom of the TV. Uh, here you can see there's two different placements for the legs, and this is everything that comes with the box. The remote is okay. The wheel is kind of loose feeling, but other than that, it's fine. Here's where you can turn off the mic and turn on the TV, and then you have your three HDMI 2.0 ports over here, because it's not HDMI 2.1 that is on the 6 series. This is the back look of the design. And the TV is fairly thick for a 2021 model, but it is only $600, so uh, nothing to complain about. Now, for $600, I gotta say, I am very, very impressed with the Blooming Control. I'm not saying that the Blooming is excellent or as good as a QN90A or anything, but it's giving some other TVs a run for their money that are twice as expensive. So, here you can see some Blooming a little bit around the Ferris wheel, which is fully to be expected, but it's a very light amount, and it's not super bright so it does do a pretty good job of keeping blacks pretty dark and on the left side of the screen was really black and then you get to a high APL screen like this and that's where it was a dead giveaway that this is going to be much brighter than last year's roughly 400 nit top measurement on the 5 series and yeah it's, it's a lot brighter than last year's now this is one problem I did see in very dark gray or near black there's this red um, now I didn't mess with any of the calibration controls and it could be that this panel is defective because uh, I do have quite a bit of DSE. Um, so I'm going to look into that some more and pay attention for that, but that's the only uh, really bad thing that I saw. So now the initial startup, you can see this is Google TV. It does give you the option if you want to set up Google TV or you can bypass it and just use your external devices and live TV. The first initial setup is pretty slow on this for some reason. Um, you got to pair your remote right here, and then when it gets to the part to install apps, uh, that just took a really long time. It's sitting two or three feet from my router, uh, and it was wireless. I should have just connected to the Ethernet, but I left it on Wi-Fi, and it probably took I don't know, 15 minutes maybe, and I didn't even select any extra apps. So I'm not sure if that's just something with the processing, but it was quite slow. But once it's all set up, then it's pretty much good to go. Um, I had to turn it off and back on after that initial setup because things were moving kind of sluggish. Uh, but this is right after turning it on the second time. And then you can see I'm pressing the buttons and it's moving just as I press them. So nothing really to complain about here. And if you're familiar with Google TV, then it's just like any others. Um, very easy to use. Uh, really no complaints with Google TV for me. Uh, so here you can see testing for dirty screen, uh, and again this panel is not that great. There is quite a bit of DSE, but that is panel lottery, and yours could be perfectly fine, or have a lot less, or even more. So uh, it's not really something to really harp on. Um, and here's just another test looking for it. So overall this TV has been pretty impressive for the $600 price range, mostly the blooming control was very good. Um, one other thing that's negative right here, if you look around the hockey player's head, you can see a little bit of red ghosting. Uh, it's not in game mode, so I didn't check it in games yet, um, but I did see it there. So it offers both Dolby Vision Bright and Dark modes. Uh, I did not, again, take any measurements, but I'm assuming the dark is probably more accurate, but the bright uh, will raise the brightness overall. So I just left it pretty much how it was, only disabled a few things. Now, one thing that is really important is when you disable all the motion settings, it will force some level of soap opera effect, and it is noticeable, at least for me, when I'm really sensitive to it. Uh, so something to keep in mind that if you're really sensitive to soap opera effect, um, I don't know if you'd be able to handle the TV or not. I watched a few episodes of stuff, and it kind of sort of got used to it but not really um, just some scenes here and there looked off to me but if you like soap opera effect then that shouldn't be a problem to you at all 
So quickly to touch on the only measurements that I did, which was for brightness. In HDR in a 10% window, it was getting 640 nits. In a 25% window was 725. And then a full screen was 620. So very impressive for a $600 TV. Now here in this image at the top of the screen, you can see blooming around the feather. But then on the sides of the feather, it's doing really good. And then on this one, I think it's doing pretty good as well. There's just very slight blooming around the image and the same here. So most of the time the blooming control is very good especially for the price range. Uh, some of the time it does perform more in line with its price range but overall I think it's doing very very good with blooming control for being a $600 TV and I think the blooming pretty much I would say is similar or in line with like an X90J or that class of TV which is twice as much money. Now this is a VA panel has very good blacks, has 40 dimming zones, uh, 8 across and 5 up and down. And this does have a quantum color layer, so colors are actually pretty darn good on this TV. Again, I'm very surprised overall in the image quality for a $600 TV. Now there are some cases or some spots here and there where you do see that it is a lower cost television, uh, but in general, for the most part, the overall picture quality is definitely competing with TVs twice its price range. So now I still haven't tested any gaming yet. It should have low input lag and be fine for 4K 60 gaming, but there is no VRR. Again, it's HDMI 2, not 2.1. But there aren't any other 2.1 TVs in the price range except the uh, LG Nano series, which is IPS. So nothing uh, surprising there. All right, so I will have a review video in the next couple of days, and if you watch this the day that it comes out, I should be having a stream soon after uh, to go over some things with it as well. Uh, so I hope to see you all then. And I'm thinking I'm not going to calibrate the TV uh, just because it's a $600 TV, and I can't think of anyone who would buy a $600 TV and then pay hundreds of dollars more for a calibration. So there are 20-point grayscale and a color management systems, you know, settings and stuff in the TV to calibrate, but it seems kind of like a waste of time for me to do that. Um, if there's enough interest, then I will. Um, I'm definitely going to at least take some measurements and see how accurate it is out of the box, uh, but I'm thinking that might be where I stop with that. So just let me know what you think. Um, again, the review should be here in a few days, and I want to thank you all for watching, and if you like this video, if you can press the like button. It will help more people to find it. Um, I haven't seen anyone else uh, have any videos on this TV yet, so uh, hopefully this helps you guys get an idea of it. Again, I'm very, very surprised. Uh, last year's 5 Series was kind of in line with its price point, whereas this one's definitely punching above its weight. So, all right. Thank you all. Have a good one, and I'll catch you in the next one.